Cheers, Molly. You know, that's called a fair trade. You couldn't find a better deal. By the way, shouldn't you be at work? Correct, Miss Molly. Yes, I should have been at work 20 bloody minutes ago. By the way, I've got some interesting shit to do today. But I thought I'd give you your macchiata and get my bottle of beer. Now I can go and have a nice little drink before I start work. Get myself pumped up. Anyway, have a nice day. Thank you. See you later. Woohoo! Right, see you on the other side. By the way, chin chin. Tally ho! Hello everybody, guess what, today, no, we are not going to be talking about Ford Mondeos. It's Vauxhall day today, specifically a 2012, I believe, Vauxhall combo van 1.3 diesel. This vehicle has been a bloody annoyance. And let me point out, first of all, I am no fan of Vauxhalls. The only Vauxhall I ever liked in my entire life was a 1970s Vauxhall Forenza. They were rare back then, and I had no money, and I couldn't bloody well afford one anyway. But I'm gonna go in the shed where I've got this engine. I've got the engine out of the van, and something went wrong with this engine, and I had to replace the engine. But what I'm gonna do when I go out there, I'm gonna to explain to you what went wrong, what happened when the vehicle got here, who looked at it, well, not specifically the person, but people here, looked at this vehicle and the whole procedure of diagnosing what was wrong with it until the end result of getting the van back on the road and then we're going to rip the engine to pieces and find out what the damage is because I really want to know it's niggling me I've got to take it apart let's go here we go yeah you know I had to change the engine on this van here in this shed uh, there it is, there it is. Yeah, that's, that, that's what it deserves. I'll come back to you later. Here, on this stand, this is my Mondeo engine, the one that I took the, uh, I'm about to take rockers out of this and bits and pieces that I've used in the, the engine in our previous video where we had the snap timing chain. So what I'm gonna do, uh, Ryan from the other garage, from the sales garage, he's got the crane. I need the engine crane to remove this engine off this stand. Then I'm going to put that Vauxhall engine on the stand and then we're going to get going. But first, like I said, I need to sort of like explain the whole scenario so you know what went wrong and what got done to it. And then you'll sort of like get a picture of uh, my frustration at all of this. Right, I'm going to try and explain this as best I can without banging on for too long. This van was being driven along, the engine cut out dead. Now the AA were called out to it and they said there's either low or no fuel pressure. So the van then subsequently got taken to the next garage up where the first person had a look at it. It's one of these vehicles where a number of people have all had a little dabble with it and had a look at it and then it ends up on my bloody lap, I get the jackpot but anyway, it went up the other garage up the road they looked at it and they got a second hand fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump fitted it, it made no difference he said they still got no fuel pressure even though I put another pump on it so the van come down to me we had a look at it and we could tell that they, these vans, they've got an in tank uh, electric fuel pump and the fuel was being pumped from the tank of the vehicle and it was diesel by the way it wasn't, it wasn't petrol the fuel was being pumped from the tank around to the high pressure fuel pump so we know we had 
diesel at the high pressure fuel pump but there was nothing coming out of the pump. If I undone the 17 mil nut on the high pressure pipe that comes out of the high pressure pump that goes to the fuel rail and you crank the engine over, there was only like a dribble coming out. But here's the thing, these common rails, they're not quite like the old rotary diesels. They don't sort of like, if you undone like one of the unions, you don't expect fuel to come flying out. They just don't work like that. You've got to leave everything connected up, all the pipes connected up properly. <coughs> we put our scanner on it and we cranked the engine over, looking at live data, fuel pressure live data, and there was next to no fuel pressure. So I said, can I have the original high pressure fuel pump that had been taken off the end, this engine? I got that, we put that fuel pump on, and guess what? All of a sudden we had like 5,000 psi, and we're thinking to myself, that would have been enough to start the engine, which seems a bit peculiar. So the pump that was, that was purchased and put on this engine to try and cure it was worse than the pump that was already on it. Now 5,000 PSI ain't a great deal on cranking, it should be more than that. So we got a brand new pump, which was, uh, they were quite cheap actually, only a couple hundred quid. We put a brand new pump and all of a sudden at cranking we had 10,000 PSI, we had double, but the engine still wouldn't start. Uh, subsequently we sort of like burnt the starter motor out and plus there was a chirping noise coming from the engine which didn't sound too good. We thought that chirping noise was the starter motor, it turned out not to be. We're, we're going to find out what that is later. Uh, but at that point I said, do you know what, fuck it. I took the fuel injectors out, all four injectors out, and I've done a compression test. I will say however, on cranking of this engine, whenever I was cranking it over, it did sound like it had plenty of compression. But when I'd done a compression test, there was hardly any compression in all four cylinders. And when I put the compression tester in cylinder number four, that kind of metallic -y chirpy noise was there as soon as there was some pressure in the cylinder. So that said to me, something catastrophic has gone on number four cylinder, either on the crankshaft, on the big ends, main bearings, or piston and the rest of the three cylinders, because there's no compression, or hard, hardly any, I'm kind of thinking something has gone. By the way, the, uh, the turbo is seized up. It's completely seized up, the impeller. It, I, I'm, I'm getting, my, my idea is that something's gone wrong with the oil pump in this. The oil flow has stopped going around the engine. It's obviously seized the turbo. Whatever's happened to it, has, I'm beginning to think maybe it's made the cam chain jump and smash all the valves. I don't know, I'm gonna find that out in a minute. But what I'm gonna do to start with, I'm gonna take the head off and see what the damage is up here, if there is anything I can see. There should be with no compression. And then I'm gonna take the sump off and see what happens. But I couldn't, I couldn't film this while I was doing the job because when I eventually got the van back here for me to actually fix the bloody thing, uh, the customer, the customer who owned the van, they've been waiting for so bloody long for this because of the poncing around uh, that we just had to get the job done like ASAP. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get this stripped down now and let's see what the damage is. <laughs> Holy crap! They're flipping. EGR valves are flipping as bad as what's on a Mark V Mondeo. Look at the freaking size of that! <laughs> yeah, well, there's your oil separator. <laughs> now I've got the inlet manifold off, I can actually see the inlet valves. I'm just going to see if they're moving. Yeah, I can see the valve moving. So I know the chain's still intact. But I'll tell you what, it feels bloody horrible to turn over. Yeah, nasty. If you didn't know what I've just found out, well, I haven't just found out, I knew this anyway. But this is one of those engines, if you want to remove the glow plugs, 
Number two glow plug is behind the bloody turbo. So it looks like you've got to take this turbo off just to replace it. Hey, ta-ra! But that, that impeller, oh, flipping heck, that, oh my, oh it does turn a little bit, but that's, that's really tight. Come on, <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. I know this is pretty irrelevant, but 10 mil socket. I just want to see if these glow plugs do undo or whether they snap. Oh, I take it all back. It's actually undone. Huh. So it would have been worth it. Yeah. We're getting to the juicy bit. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> it looks like this flange has got to come off as well. I'll just point out here, I do not have the timing kit to time this timing chain up. So I get the feeling the chain's jumped anyway, but I obviously can't check that. So I'm just going to rip it all apart anyway. Oh dear, that's tight. That's bloody tight. I'm going to heat it up and see if we can undo it this way. I'm thinking this is a left hand thread, but that's, that, that's cooking now, that's really hot. Right, go for it. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Let's do the, the tea challenge. Oh, <laughs> that's instantly boiled my tea. <laughs> yeah. I was starting to get worried there. I was going to snap my socket. Then I would have been annoyed. Yeah, uh, as long as that flange comes off, so I'll give that a little pry. Oh, oh, it's coming out. Oh my god, we're in luck. Woo! <laughs> that is rather on the bit on the hot side. I'm going to remove this water pump anyway, just for the hell of it, because I think it's covering that. I don't know whether that timing cover's going to actually come past this pump pulley. So, if we just get the pump out anyway and be done with it. Oh look, it says new chain, 4th of the 11th, 20. It's done it a fat lot of good though, hasn't it? Anyway, I've got a whole row of 10 mil bolts that I need to whack out. So, uh, let's go. It's looking very much like the sump has to come off first. Yeah, it does. There's studs in the way. I'm not going to be able to get the casing off. So I better drain the oil out first. Heave ho! There she blows! Yeah! Oh dear, just as well I put the polythene down. See what I mean? You've got two studs coming through from the case timing casing, through the sump here, and you've got another two studs coming from the engine bottom section. So you can't get the bloody timing casing off until you take the sump off first. Anyway, let's whack all these 10 mils out. <laughs> Will it come off? <laughs> it's it's certainly st stuck down well. Bloody hell! Yeah, come on! <laughs> oh my god! Who the bloody hell stuck this bastard down? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. 
what can we see? Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the hell is that? It, it's certainly metallic looking. Jingos. There, there's a hole. Oh, come here, come here. There's a whole bunch of uh, pieces of metal in the bottom of the sump. I don't know if they're supposed to be there. I'm, I'm kind of guessing they're not. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of sealed its fate really, hasn't it? I'm going to flip it back round now and get the camshaft cover off and see what damage we've got up there. Well, tally hole. Let's get the cover off. Yeah. Well, the old chain is still intact. I'll tell you one thing though, what did fall out the sump, this uh, piece of guide, which I'm guessing goes down there like that. That's completely come off. This uh, fuel rail, ah, flipping it, that's tight, needs to come off because it's right in the bloody way of the camshaft cover bolts. Yeah. If I was going to check the, the actual valve timing and the chain was on in the right position, either side of the cam cover there's like a, a little uh, Allen key hole here. You'd take this out and you'd put a pin in there and the same on the other side, the other camshaft. And I believe there's another pin you put in to lock the crankshaft, which I don't have the timing kit. By the way, this, uh, this is a uh, left hand thread to undo it. So it's, it's, it's like you've got to turn it anti-clockwise to tighten it and clockwise to undo the crankshaft bolt. You know, just turning this engine over, it feels like horrible. But I'm just wondering uh, why there's no compression in the cylinders and all four of them. It makes me think all the valves have been hit, but the chain is still on. So unless it's jumped teeth and bent all the valves, I don't know. Anyway, let's get this rocker cover off first, and then we'll, we'll find out. I'll tell you what, all these 10 mils, yeah, they are yeah, proper tight. Here we go. <laughs> Oh dear, I think I've got to, uh, <laughs> hang on, yeah, I think you're supposed to disconnect the, the uh, camshaft sprocket first. <coughs> Bingo. Come on Mr. Chain, off you come. <laughs> right, let's try again. Looks like the camshaft's come off with the actual carrier. And it's stuck on that gas, there, that's it. Well, 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 as you can see, I'm totally unfamiliar with these engines, but from your camshaft, well, uh, cam sprocket here, uh, you've got your two camshafts, and I was saying earlier about your actual, you'd have to pin both these camshafts up. They've got, uh, just here, you put a pin in each side, and if I spin, because you've got like two cogs that rotate together, keep these in sync, and if I rotate both of these camshafts, They've got like little flats in here, in the camshaft, that, that line up with the holes in the casing. And uh, they both line up together. So both these camshafts are actually in sync as they should be. So uh, that's good. They actually look okay. Anyway, bugger it. This, uh, all these valve rockers, uh, they're all still spinning. <laughs> there is oil on them. It does look a bit sparse on oil at the top here though, but there again the engine's been sitting around for a little while. So uh, I think what I'm going to do now, everything in place, looks in place here, the valves all look about right, so I think we should unbolt this head and pull it off and see if we can see anything wrong on the valve side of things. I'm not sure exactly what bolts these are, but my, my Torx 55 fits them. <laughs> And it, and it undoes them. <laughs> this is it. 
Will the head come off? Oh, <laughs> it is actually loose. Here goes. Yeah. Let's see all the tappets fall out now. Well, I can honestly say the valves, they all kind of look okay. It doesn't look like the chain's jumped. So that's so obviously it hasn't got bent valves. That's not the reason for the low compression. I just want to point something out here. Uh, sending the number three, if, if I get hold of the piston, I can literally, can you hear that? I can pull the piston up and down. That's that the big end shells are completely knocked out on the crankshaft, I know. And I'm pulling that up like a, a good millimetre. So, <laughs> when we get the big end shells off, we'll see the damage they've done. And there is coolant in number two cylinder down here. So I don't know whether that's got any bearing on the fact. If I get this head gasket off. Yeah. Right, let me just get the cylinders numbers one and two near the top to the TDC. I've got an idea. So I'm trying to work out why we got low compression. Okay, I'll get that near the top. About, in fact, if I take it right to the top, that's as high as it goes, and it's actually sitting, piston sitting below the uh, block line. And I, th this number four actually looks lower, but if I take this back just a little bit, about there, let me just give this another try with this bar. Oh. Do you see that? That just dropped. <laughs> that piston just dropped. Watch this. Yeah. Look at that. Oh my God. That, that is why we've got low compression. I know it doesn't seem a lot. That's probably a millimeter in depth that it's losing. But that millimeter is all the difference between having good compression and shit compression. I would say the big ends are knocked out on the crankshaft. So I think the next step is to get the crankshaft shells off and see, well, to see whether it is the crankshaft shells or whether it's the little ends. I'm, I would say it's more the big end shells, if anything. But that, that is obviously why we've got low compression in the cylinders, without a doubt. For those of you that do remember, years ago, if you had a diesel engine apart, like the cylinder head off, you would get the pistons to protrude above the block line and you would measure the actual distance the pistons protruded above the block and then that would determine what thickness head gasket you were going to use. It just brings it home how critical it is to have the right amount of head gasket thickness so that the compression in the engine is just right because if you get it wrong and it, the engine cannot give you enough compression you're going to have a very underpowered engine. And in this case, it is far too much. It's that, that millimetre, or, or maybe a bit more, is what is losing nearly all the compression in the engine. But the big burning question I've got is why has this engine knocked out the crankshaft shells? That's if it is the shells. I'll find out in the morning because I'm going to call it a night now. But uh, I'm still getting a feeling. My, my theory of the timing chain has jumped is obviously out the window. I'm still putting this, though, on the fact that it's had oil pressure loss, possibly because the oil pump has stopped working and that's what's done the shells in and that's what's caused all of this. But I'll investigate further in the morning. Right then, Thursday morning, I'm ready to rock. Hi right, Matt. Well, then, what's the plan for today then? Well old boy, I'm going to go out into the shed and I'm going to give the crippled engine a bloody good seeing to. Sounds like a plan. Oh well, chin chin. Let's bend the old girl over once again. Okay, flashlight. Can we see where she's dropped a bollock? Nope, nothing in there. Righto. There, that's number one and four exposed. <coughs> the proof is in the pudding. <coughs> Here goes. This is number one big end shell. Do you know what? Just like every other engine I seem to pull apart, 
the flipping big end shells. Look, look at the step on that. Look at the, look at the freaking step on that. That, that shell is like worn, <laughs> like as thin as a piece of paper. Oh my God. I, even the oil hoe is half blocked up. Uh, I reckon this shell has been running like this. In order to get that fin, it's been running like this for flipping some time, I know. Bloody hell, I'm surprised the driver didn't hear it before the actual engine can eventually give up. And that was number one nearest the oil pump. Let's check out number four, furthest away from the oil pump. Oh my God, look at the state of that crankshaft journal. Holy crap. Do you know what, no wonder this engine was so horrible and tight and uh, I'd like to, to actually turn it over by hand. No bloody wonder. God knows how long this has been driven like that. But that, that crankshaft is completely twatted. Okay, next two. <coughs> Alrighty. This is number three. <laughs> oh dear. That one, that one is scored to hell as well. Big end shell number two. <laughs> God, all four of them, full set. In for a penny, in for a pound. I think we should whip the carrier off and take the crankshaft <coughs> right out, and then we'll push the piston <coughs> And let's face it, we've come this far, we might as well strip the bitch. <coughs> so hey ho, I do believe Let's give it a shock. So this is it. Off she comes. I think. Possibly. <laughs> yes. One crankshaft carrier. It's hanging on by a thread. Didn't want to come off. Well, that's that then. I guess at the very least, you, you, can, you can honestly say you've seen inside a 1.3 CDTI. Okay then, let's lift the old girl out. <laughs> there. <laughs> I feel like Rambo. <laughs> anyway, come on chaps, back to reality. <laughs> this is a uh, number flipping egg. I'm totally lost. Number one, two, number three cylinder. That there's, there's absolutely next to nothing left of that shell. Most of it's completely gone. Well, let's pop a number four, a piston outer. Well, uh, I don't really know what to say. The rings aren't seized in or anything. It's a bit shitty, but... <laughs> nah. I'd, I'd probably say the piston rings were okay. It probably was burning a little bit of oil. There's nothing broken ring-wise. The, the actual little ends which are in there, they feel okay. I can't like, yeah, I can't feel any play in, the, in them bearings. But it's like, even, even like the, the casing where the shell would sit is scored badly. It's like this engine has been run for so bloody long with the shells completely gone. It's worn through the shells and started wearing onto the actual conrod. So this engine must have been rattling long, long before it actually died. I will have to say, the crank, uh, the main bearing shells, that one's starting to pick up there, like it's been getting dry and getting a bit worn. But they are not too bad considering the state of the big end shells. I just wanted to get a look at this oil pump, but the, the flipping screws holding it down they are like really, really flipping tight. So I'm having to use a pin punch to actually like get them started. So uh, here goes. Right, let's see if that's got it. Yes. 
I shall just remove this oil pressure relief valve. That was actually pretty damn tight to crack loose. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a spring. <laughs> Still intact. The oil pickup, uh, that's going to need to come off by the looks of things. I think them screws go through the pump and into the casing, this outer casing. So I shall waz that out of the way. I will say the actual gauze uh, where it picks the oil up in the sump, that looks pretty clean. So the burning question is, are we going to see anything on this oil pump? Probably bloody not. Last screw. Out you come. Hey, it's coming apart. Well, <laughs> I didn't actually expect to see a great deal in here. I'm kind of hoping that maybe there was some really deep scores in the oil pump like a catastrophic a catastrophic failure of the oil pump I guess it's going to be in here really if I take if it will come apart sorry guys this isn't working out too well I've just actually hammered through there with a screwdriver to get the centre part of the oil pump apart and it's it's popped in it's popped out should I say there it is it looks okay I'm not seeing anything like any kind of serious damage so uh, that part of the oil pump looks okay it all looks clean looking at that oil pump it looks well on the to face value it looks okay it doesn't look like there's anything untoward if you know what I mean so uh, maybe the oil pump was still pumping oil around the engine well that's it I'm bored with this now. A couple nights ago when I took my uh, live stream, God, do you know I hit my bloody finger with a hammer? I can't believe it. Uh, I spoke about, this, there's a woman who comes here. She's got like quite a new, I forget what year it is now. It's quite a new Corsa with a 1.3 CDTI, the same engine that I've got here. She bought the car like brand new. Uh, she looks after it like a baby. She brings it in as it's serviced, has the oil changed regularly. And yet, the other few weeks back when I drove it, because I have to pick her up from town, I'm driving it and I can hear the engine and I'm thinking to myself, flipping it, this is a rattly old engine. And it, 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 since then, and since this engine, everyone I've spoke to that has come or had anything to do with these bloody engines, they just say, nah, nah, no good, not a good engine. So for the actual small amount that I do know about these, I can honestly sort of like get to the kind of conclusion that is uh, I will try to avoid them in the future. Just as well, it's Vauxhalls and we're, we're mainly Ford here. But as far as this engine goes, that I've just stripped down, the oil pump looks okay. So that flings my theory, because I, I thought it was an oil pump failure which has caused all this, but I'm thinking now it's just, I don't know the history on the engine. It's probably been a period of time, lack of maintenance, lack of oil changes, and probably getting ragged around. It's not the driver's fault, obviously. It's, uh, I do reckon it's just an ordinary van engine that's just been sort of like, no one's bothered servicing it properly, and over time the engine has deteriorated, and obviously once the shells start to get worn, you get lack of oil pressure anyway. So the oil pressure was a factor in it. And obviously once the shells got to the point where they did get knocked out, it was a very quick process after that. And as you can see from them pistons, anyone who knows anything about diesels, the actual compression in a diesel engine is absolutely critical. When people used to measure, we used to measure the head gasket thickness to get the correct head gaskets on these engines. If you've got the wrong head gasket, that engine would be seriously underpowered. And the amount of play, when them big uh, shells are worn out, the amount of play in them pistons had, that reduced the compression in each cylinder to next to nothing. That's how critical they are. Anyway, 
That's it. So that's my little autopsy done. I thought it was rather interesting. I just wanted to take that engine apart and see what the hell was wrong inside it. Just out of pure interest. The actual change, mind you, the actual change in the engine in that van, that combo van, it weren't a bad job. It's, it's, like, it's like everything else. Once you know how to do it, it's quite easy. And it was getting my head around sort of like, what I've got to undo this, that and the third. But now I've done it, I could do that in like next to no time next time, if there is a next time. Anyway, there's something else we've got here because the, the old Jag that was up the car cells has been sold. And I wanted to go for a road test in that and drive it around, but it's not going to happen now because I, it's been sold and it's got to be MOT'd. So when it gets on the ramp, I'm going to have a quick look at it. Oh, just one last thing. That's a fitting end to a lot of old junk! Well, 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 look at this. I would have loved to have taken this out for a run. Flipping it, but blimey, it's, it's been sold, you see, so. Uh, you, know, you know what's probably gonna happen, you'll go out and so, something bad will happen. So uh, I think I'll just sort of like get it serviced, get it prepped and everything like that. I pop the bonnet. Look at that, Jaguar V8. The guy who's bought this, I think it's American, which is good for him because they get cheap petrol on the Oakenbury base. We don't get cheap petrol <laughs> at our pumps, that's for sure. By the way, this car has got a gas conversion, LPG, I believe. There, if I switch that little button, yep, it's all working. I'll leave it off for the time being. But I know LPG was a thing once upon a time, but they've kind of gone out of fashion. Oh, how do you open the boot? One minute. There. Let's see what we got. We've got a space. Oh God, that's heavy. A space saver spare wheel. Tool kit ton of paperwork and there is our LPG tank all bolted in right well I'm gonna take this up and have a look underneath and see how she looks okay this is it I'm going in I've got to walk around to the back of the ramp I like this scissor round because there's no bar there, you can just walk straight down. You ain't got to keep bending over. Anyway, let's have a look. I've heard about corrosion on these, these vehicles. Apparently can be quite severe. We shall see. That steering UJ up there. I shall check that. In fact, I'm going to run over this entire vehicle and I'm going to check all the suspension. Well, it's going to have an MOT anyway. Plus, it's going to have an oil and filter change. There's the filter. What have we got? It looks pretty dry, guys. I can't see any oil leaks. That's always a good sign. Air conditioning condenser. Right, so far so good. The brake pads, they're then bloody uh, green stuff pads by the looks of them. I'm gonna take the light away. The, the pads got like the green, they're, they're called green stuff I think. I think they're like performance pads. Maybe not, 
I might be wrong. You've got a green backing on the pads. Mm. Weird and wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but it's well under sealed. The exhaust look good. Yeah, I'll try and like manoeuvre this camera about slow. This is my iPhone. It's just it's just a lot easier than carrying that bloody bulky camera and trying to move it about underneath a car. It's difficult. Uh, tell these mobile phones come in very useful. There's a little bit of like rust there. Just needs a bit more under seal. It looks pretty looks pretty solid though. Uh, The, the actual brake pipes that run like front to rear and go to your rear hoses, they look absolutely immaculate, which is a good thing. Brand new brake pads at the back. So he's had some recent work done to it. Look at those drive shafts. <laughs> the exhaust. There's no exhaust blow that I can hear. It sounds nice. I'm looking for any corrosion, but I can't see none. Well, I have been told there isn't any on this and it's very good condition. So, I would have to agree, she's a fine woman. She's got a nice body, been kept well. That's what we like to see. Flipping heck, that is one big prop shaft under there. As long as them UJs aren't knocked out. Nope, it's looking good. Right. I shall, uh, I shall jack it up, check all the joints and everything, and I think that'll probably do. I have found sod all wrong with this car. I told you it was a good car. I think I think we should go down the road in it just quickly. I've got to do it. Matt, I need a driver. I need, my, I need my chauffeur hat. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll drive it, you just hold the camera. Oh, okay. Let's just go out. Let's not crash it though. <laughs> Best you drive then. <laughs> Look at this. We haven't got floor mats here at Steve's Taxis. Well, cream, cream carpets, I don't want to be getting them dirty. We are recording. I've just got to get up the road in this car just to see what it drives like. Ooh, actually get rid of that. Look at this. I can say I've driven XK8 Jaguar. Look at that walnut dash. I can't abuse it because it's a customer's car. And, uh, but I have to road test it. I've got to make sure it drives fine. That throbbing V8 engine, this walnut dash. By the way, I'm not using the LPG shit, we're using proper bloody high octane fuel. What's it go like anyway? Like a jag. Woo! It's not as quick as what I thought it would be, you know. I thought it would have, been, it would have gone like, this ain't supercharged, I don't think. No. no. no normally aspirated V8. Nice and torquey. Yeah. I do like it though. I could do a lot of miles in this. Trouble is, it'd be no good if you got like kids in the back seats. Well, you could fit kids in the back seats, but not adults. <laughs> <laughs> not, not much headroom or, or leg room. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. It's got plenty of petrol. We could go to Sunny Honey. Yeah. I like it. Proper. Sure, sure about your driving, huh? <laughs> <laughs> It's nice and quiet, it drives in a straight line. Yeah. We can't get to car sales because the bloody roadworks are here for six goddamn weeks. And they've blocked the entire road off. Yeah, that's nice. I'm glad I drove this. What do you reckon, Matt? Nice car? I don't, don't know, it's a bit old for me. You're an Audi A. A, A what? A5. A5. Three litre TDI, man. I mean, give it give it 20 years, I could see myself in one of these quite possibly. <laughs> you need a deer stalker hat. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to have a supercharger for my liking. Right, that's it. Brilliant. Okay then, it's been a long old day. We've had our fun. There's our Jag again. I've just spent flipping ages fitting a windscreen. Someone asked me earlier this week, what are some of the nastiest jobs I've ever had to do? This is one of them, fitting a windscreen. It was horrible. See that, see that trim there? That comes out, you, that will pull out, okay? But you have to fit it back with the windscreen. And there's plastic clips that go around there. If you don't save them, they're about 80 pounds for a new set of clips. Luckily, I, I saved enough to fit this, because this trim fits on the screen before you put the whole lot back in as one big unit. But it weren't that, it was cutting the screen out. The ceiling had turned to bloody concrete. Flipping Jesus Christ. It was like trying to chop through it. I, no, no matter what I used, it was no good. I've done it in the end, but it was bloody hard work. I was, I've lost half my body weight trying to fit that windscreen. All I've got to do now is remove the stickers. Anyway, this is sold. It's going to get a brand new MOT put on it. Everything's great on it. I like it. I'm actually sad to see it go. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear it, but because we're like directly opposite RF Alconbury uh, Air Base, every night at five o'clock, they play the national anthem. <laughs> anyway, this would seem an appropriate point to finish the video. It's been a nice hot day and I'm done. I need a shower. So till the next time guys, have a good one out there. See ya. Yeah! Yeah! Lot of old junk. <laughs>